Begin by finding your Chrome EXE in Program Files, Google, Chrome, Application. Right click, create a shortcut. Click yes and send the shortcut to the desktop. Next, right click your Chrome shortcut and go to properties. In the target field, you're gonna to wanna to fill in one of the two lines of code I have written in the description based on if it is saved in program files or program files x86 originally. If you use profiles by default while using Chrome, you're gonna to wanna to add an extra condition to select which profile this shortcut is going to launch into and make sure all Chrome tabs are closed before you start the process. Next, we're gonna open RenderDoc, go file and then inject into process. Now open your Chrome shortcut you've created and a pop-up should appear with a number run. Take this number, go back to RenderDoc and search it here. Click refresh and you should see the Google Chrome process pop up. Click that once, click inject and then you should be done. Go back to your Chrome and click OK on the box that originally appeared and it should load Chrome successfully. Now when you see this black box of writing in the top left corner of the screen with a little FPS count, you know it's working successfully. Now we're going to open Google Maps. We're going to go to the location which we want to download into our Blender file. If we click the Layers tab in the bottom left corner of the screen, you need to make sure Globe View is ticked. And if you untick labels, it'll give you a better representation of the file you're going to be downloading. I recommend you use Big Cities as they're going to be more detailed, more dense, and they're going to have a few landmarks handcrafted by Google here and there. So I'm using London for this example because I know the London Eye has been modelled. So RenderDoc is only going to download the sections which your browser can currently see in the resolution which your browser is currently looking at them in. So you need to wait for everything to load properly before you click the button and you need to make sure you have everything you want in view. One way to get more detail if you need it is to click the three dots in the right corner and zoom out of your Chrome browser. This will allow Chrome to load more of the map at once. When you have everything you want to download in view, switch over to RenderDoc and click the capture button. This will download everything on the screen and it should be a file between about 50 or 150 megabytes depending on how much data you're capturing at once. This can be a little fiddly so if it's not working correctly a trick you can use is the capture after delay feature. Maybe add 4 or 5 seconds, click the button, switch back to your browser and slowly rotate with shift and left click. This should successfully grab a decent render of the area. Once you're ready to export, go back to RenderDoc, click the thumbnail of the one you want to download, press the save button and then save this capture file, which will then open in Blender. Create a new project in Blender and delete the default cube. Now go to the GitHub link in the description and download Maps Model Importer plugin for Blender. Now you want to go to Edit, Preferences, click the Install button in the top right and navigate to where your Maps Model Importer.zip is stored. We're going to want to install this add-on. Next you want to search for it to make sure it's activated in the project. You need to make sure the tick box on the left hand side is ticked. After this when we go to our import window we should have a new option at the bottom of the list to import Google Maps Capture. Once we do that we can search for our files from earlier and import them directly into Blender. Now bigger files will obviously take a second to load but once they're here you have full textured 3D models of anywhere in the world you want to use. It's not incredibly detailed up close but for wide angle shots, just pictures of scenery, it's quite useful. Especially concept art, maybe you want to drop a building in that you're working on, maybe you want to use it for a flyover, lots of interesting ideas you can use with this. With this it's very simple to make some nice realistic drone or heli shots just make sure you get some slow realistic camera moves make sure you add a little bit of camera shake in post maybe and you can have some reasonably attractive overhead shots of areas you can see here the london eye model is not very pretty but with this overhead shot here i mean you're not going to notice when this is moving at speed it looks fairly good Maybe you could try adding some people walking down the street, some moving vehicles might be easier. Just something to make it seem a bit more alive and then some of these shots are definitely going to look very nice. If you use cycles, it's going to look even better. You can mess around with some of the lighting, but just be careful because there are some baked in shadows into some of the textures on Google Maps. Something I've used this for in the past is overlaying information on top of the 3D map. So for example, in the clip I'm showing here, I overlay a track or a circuit I'm running on in the style of some sort of like F1 intro or something like that. There's a lot of interesting ideas you can come up with. 